Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to talk about books on swimming. Uh, so as uh, a lot of you probably know by now, I have been looking for books about swimming since reading one last year called Leap In uh, by Alexandra Hemmingsley, which was a memoir of the author learning to swim. Uh, she sort of conquered her fear of swimming and in the process of the memoir you also learn some general things about swimming as a sport or as an activity, um, as a thing to do. I really loved reading that one last year, so I've been on the lookout for other books on swimming. And this year I picked up a book called Swell by Jenny Landreth, uh, which I have mentioned several times before because I've been reading it since May. Um, and it is a part talking about sort of the social and cultural history of women swimming in particular uh, because women have not always been allowed access to swimming uh, so it's talking about the development of uh, rules and um, sort of manners around women swimming in various places but also in sort of competitions in terms of the costumes and um, and all those things but also how swimming impacts a person, general things that uh, we as humans experience, what women gain from swimming and also what the author has experienced through swimming. Uh, so it, it takes a fairly broad look at swimming and uh, looking particularly in how women have had um, access into this field. I just finished this book yesterday actually and uh, I really enjoyed it, especially the uh, parts that talk about uh, the author's own experiences because I think one thing that I've learned through reading this book is I particularly like to learn about how swimming impacts a person emotionally and how uh, what you gain from swimming. While I enjoyed the contents of the history, I much more connected with the memoir aspects of this book. Uh, but I wanted to talk about books on swimming in general because this book has connected, some of the contents of this has connected with other things that I've been reading recently uh, so I thought I would talk about some other things as well on swimming and various aspects of it. Uh, so this book uh, talks for example about a woman called Lynn Roper and I knew that I recognized her name and it is the author of Wild Woman Swimming um, that was long listed for the Wainwright Prize this year and will be uh, one of my next reads. Uh, it is uh, a book, a, a memoir about the author doing outdoor swimming and one of the themes that comes up in writing on swimming is healing through swimming. Uh, a lot of these books and this these writings uh, take sort of the look at how swimming can both heal in terms of um, aching uh, bones and bodies, uh, but also mentally, uh, how it's sort of a meditative thing. The faster I walk, the smaller I am, that I just finished rereading, um, that it, it sort of ends on um, a scene with the protagonist going swimming. And it talks a little bit about the feeling of an old body in water and how, um, how you can feel weightless and how that is such a um, freeing kind of sensation. Um, and that is also touched on in um, Swell, where the author talks about being pregnant and swimming, uh, how for once you can feel completely um, weightless and being sort of hugged by the water. and what a freeing sensation it can be to be in water, uh, especially in uh, a pregnant state. Uh, but it also touches on um, swimming being a kind of activity that doesn't uh, exclude anyone in terms of body size um, or age, that it is a kind of thing that allows everyone uh, to be part of it and that it is very inclusive and that it can be a freeing sensation no matter who you are. But in particular, if you do have some kind of, uh, like for example, ache or pain, uh, chronic pain, for example, one of the books that I've been reading that talks about that is A Taste of Chlorine by Bastien Vives. Vives. Um, this is a, a, a graphic novel. It opens with um, a man, a young man who has problems with his spine curvature spine so he has some kind of um, 
physical pain in in particular in his back and he is recommended by his chiropractor to go swimming to loosen up his muscles and so he starts swimming once a week and um, the purpose at first is of course the, the, the physical experience of it but it ends up being sort of an entry point to connecting with other people and having um, the sort of community aspect of swimming um, being anonymous in a way because everyone in a pool is sort of stripped off of everything that is sort of uh, status signifiers so you don't really know much about a person in the water and because of that there is a different kind of um, possibility to connect with people on um, a different level or in a different way and that is also a, a theme in uh, Jenny Landreth's book. Uh, you see people in a very intimate kind of situation in the water and uh, this book is partly following um, this young man getting to know a woman in the water and they uh, he goes weekly they end up meeting uh, several weeks in a row and building a kind of friendship through that one uh, one time in the week um, so this book definitely touches on the fact that um, you can go to uh, swimming looking for something particular, but it doesn't necessarily uh, mean that that is the only thing you get out of it, if that makes sense. Uh, I finished The Faster I Walk, The smar Smaller I Am that ends on, ends on a scene with an old person going swimming and looking for something through that experience. And a book that I have just started that opens with almost this uh, identical scene is Chalamas Ö by uh, Johanna Holmström, which is obviously a Swedish book. It is a historical fiction novel and uh, it's set in the late 19th century. Another thing that has come up over and over again in, uh, in swimming and in character of water is its ability to strip away uh, weights, the way that um, the water can um, swallow up secrets both physically and symbolically. I want to touch on two books that have um, sort of touched on the the dangers of water and, and water itself, uh, the characteristic of water, uh, because a lot of these books that I've been reading have been on a very positive side. But there's also this danger to water, not as much in uh, sort of indoors pools or in littles, but definitely in outdoor swimming. And uh, so the first book that, actually the first book that touched on this, uh, that I've been reading this year, is um, Liquid Matters by Matt Mudonik, Mark Mudonik, I think. Um, that is a, ch a chemistry book, actually, but it one uh, chapter on uh, of that book taught talks about water. He talks about one instance when he was going out for swimming and suddenly he was um, sort of caught in this stream, I think, almost drowning in the pro progress of uh, being in water. And another book that has touched on the dangers of uh, water and swimming in general is I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell. How easily you can lose control in an element that you um, might feel very comfortable in for a long time but then suddenly uh, you are not anymore and it, it can so quickly, um, the tables can so quickly turn around because water is wild. This book highlights the uh, the possibilities of danger and risks with swimming outdoors or being in water outdoors and um, how quickly a situation can turn um, perilous. A different perspective on swimming that is definitely a big part of swimming and swimming history, the, the uh, danger of drowning for example, and how a lot of the developments of uh, teaching swimming uh, has been brought about because of uh, a, a large portion of drowning deaths. And another book that talks about not necessarily the risks of water, but definitely the power of water and how it can uh, work against you in a way, is Waterfalls of Stars by Alexander. 
So this book is about the author uh, moving to Skoma and it's an island surrounded by water. So obviously water has a big impact on her everyday living situation. And one of the things that the water has um, meaning for is whether they can travel from the island to the mainland, um, whether they can connect with the rest of the world is completely dependent on the way the water is behaving that day or even that hour. The water can mean total isolation for them. Um, one instance in this book talks about her uh, boyfriend or her husband actually because they got married to move to this island uh, him being stuck in a boat because they were um, he and uh, the person that he was on the boat with uh, got caught in a storm for me it definitely highlights the, the fears that i have of being in water and being outdoors in water the um, fear of being in an uncontrolled environment of water because uh, again and going back to Swell, one of the things that she says she likes about Littles is that you get all of the good parts of being outdoors, but you still have some kind of boundary to the water, to the um, to the water space, and that takes away some of the fear and uh, uncertainty of being in water. And I think. Um, that fear is something that a lot of people probably feel and this book definitely highlights for me that I do have that kind of under uh, underlying slight um, anxiety over um, being in that kind of open space without any kind of boundaries um, not just in water but in general having that kind of completely open space that anything can happen that you have basically no control in um, and Actually, I think a lot of the books that talk on swimming, talk about swimming, talk about the feelings of control and also of letting go control through being in water. Um, so yeah, so those are a few of the books that I've been reading recently, uh, or am currently reading that talk on uh, about swimming in various forms. I would love to know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, and also feel free to recommend me any books talking about swimming that you have enjoyed. Uh, I would love to know. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon.